we're going to continue with section 1.4. Write this down, 1.4. It's called rational expressions. And here we're talking about the different laws pertaining to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of rational, uh, rational expressions. So first, a rational expression looks like looks like this. So you have a numerator and you have a denominator. A numerator, a numerator has a polynomials and denominator has a polynomials. So this would be a rational expression. So how do you add to rational expression? So here P, and again, P, Q, R, and S are polynomials. Okay, so P divided by R plus Q divided by R equal P plus Q, the whole thing divided by R. This is like taking the common denominator. Common denominator, for example, if you have, this is, if you have one half plus three half, right? You have the same denominator. The common denominator is two and numerator would be one plus three, which is equal to four half which is equal to two, right? So that basically is, is saying the same thing. If instead of numbers, if instead of real numbers, you had polynomials, you would do the same thing. You write one of the denominators, one of the polynomials as a denominator, and you add up the two, two other polynomials in the numerator. If you were subtracting, if you were subtracting two rational expression, then then the common denominator again is the same r, and you subtract the numerator. Again, uh, as, as a numerical example, if these were real numbers, 3 half minus 1 half. So since it is the same denominator, you write one of them, and it would be 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So that, uh, with the real numbers, it would work also. For the multiplication, for the multiplication rule under rational expression, you have P divided by R, Q divided by S, it would be equal to P times Q and R times S. Again, P, Q, R, S, these are all polynomials. Um, even if they were, even if they were uh, real numbers, you would follow the same rule. So again, three halves multiplied by five eights, for example. That, you multiply two by eight, so that would be 16, and five by three, that would be 15. So there would be, this would be 15, 16, when you multiply. For the division, when you have expressions divided by each other, you flip one of them, you flip one of them, as we've done here, and write it as a multiplication. So it would be P R, P divided by R divided by Q divided by S. You make it a P divided by R multiplied by S divided by Q. So it would be P S divided by R Q. Again, I can, I can make an example of saying three half divided by five eight. That would be written as three half multiply by 8 fifth, so that would be equal to 24 divided by 10, which is equal to uh, 6 fifth, right? No, I'm sorry, 12 fifth. Okay, so these are rational expression. We are going to see more example, just a second, okay? It tells you, notice the common denominator is R, both of them are R, and here with the division is telling you, take the reciprocal and multiply, reciprocal of Q divided by S would be S divided by Q. So that's, that's all it's uh, telling you.
So continuing with the rational expression, here you want to simplify this, this expression. So x squared minus 25 in the numerator, x squared plus 7x plus 10, right? So using those rules you have, factoring rules you have uh, studied this far, then you can factor both numerator and denominator. I'm going to write it down. So this is the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. You remember the rule says you can put it as two parentheses would be x minus 5 times x plus 5. That's the numerator. This at the bottom, this polynomial, using trial and error, you can figure out x here, x here. Two numbers that if you multiply them would give you plus 10. If you add them, it would give you a plus 7, right? That would be, I don't need to trial and error, that would clearly be 2 and 5. Okay, x plus 2 times x plus 5. Now, this x plus 5 in the denominator, this x plus 5 in the numerator would cancel. Therefore, the final answer would be x minus 5 divided by x plus 2. Okay, I can do, I can do this cancellation because these are multiplication here. These are multiplication. You have these two... Uh, these two polynomials multiply in number. If it was plus or minus, I could not do that. So please, uh, uh, please remember that. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, I guess I need to get rid of this and you would see basically the same thing I had written in red. It's written nicer on the slide. x minus five times x plus five. That's the difference of the squares and this one is x plus 2 times x plus 5 and cancel the common factor which is those two the answer therefore is x minus 5 divided by x plus 2. Now multiplication of rational expression again here I can go ahead and multiply first and then uh, and then uh, cancel any like term in the numerator and denominator, or I can factor first and, and do the multiplication later on. So let's factor. Let's say this would be equal to, you have x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm actually going to write it on top here. x squared plus 2x plus 1. This, this would be written as x plus 1 and actually x plus 1 or x plus 1 squared. 6x squared minus 6x, I can, the greatest common factor between these two would be 6x and would be x minus 1. As you can see, everything is multiplied. Right, this multiply by this, multiply by 6x, multiply by x minus 1. Difference of two squares in the denominator, it would be x minus 1 times x plus 1. And here you have x to the third. I'm going to keep that. There is nothing to factor. Now, now you can see that this x plus 1 in the denominator can cancel with this x plus 1 in the numerator. This x minus 1 can cancel with this x minus 1. In the denominator, the h to the third and this h to the one, this one can cancel and this one would now be h squared. Therefore, I'm going to write it down here. In the numerator, the only thing I have is 6 times x plus 1. That is 6 times x plus 1. In the denominator, I have h squared and nothing else. So, the multiplication here would be equal to this. So let's see how they have done it. Okay. Again, x plus 1, x plus 1. They did this in the numerator. x divided by 3 in the denominator. Multiplied. 
factor out 6x, same thing we did, and the difference of two squares, it comes up with this, and cancel the common factor, as we have done. Therefore, finally, 6 times x plus 1 divided by h squared, which is basically the same thing we got here. Okay, so it's not, it's not really that difficult once you get a hang of it. Adding or subtracting, adding or subtracting. Now here you have 3 divided by x plus 2 divided by x plus 4. Now you don't have the same denominator, so denominators are different. Denominators are different, right? So you have to find the least common denominator between these two. Least common denominator between these two. So one thing you can do, well, the way I do it, it would be a little bit different from the way they, they're going to do it um, in just a second, you're going to see, um, is that the least common denominator between x and x minus 4 is actually x multiplied by x or h plus 4, multiply by h plus 4. That's the least common denominator between these two, right? When you divide this least common denominator by the first denominator, you get h plus 4. So h plus 4 would be multiplied by 3. 3 times h plus 4 plus 2. Now, when you divide h, plus, h times x plus 4 by the second denominator, you get only x, so it would be 2 times x. So 3 times x plus 4 would be 3x plus 12 plus 2x divided by x times x plus 4 would be x squared plus 4x. Now 3x and 2x would be 5x. So here you have 5x plus 12 divided by x squared divide, uh, x squared plus plus 4x. So that's basically the final answer after you um, add these two rational expressions. Okay? Now we're going to see how they did it. So I took the common denominator, that's what I did here. Take the common, the least common denominator between these two. What they did here, they multiplied the first expression, the 3 divided by x, by the denominator of the second one. So you, you multiply 3 by x plus 4 and x by x plus 4, okay? And then the second expression you multiply by the denominator of the first one which is x, so it would be 2x, and this would be x times x plus 4. Now you can use the rules you saw in the previous table. Now you have the same denominator, r, as you, as you had it before. So you have the same denominator, so you write one denominator and add up the numerators together. We wrote one denominator and added up. So it would be 3x plus 12 plus 2x, 5x plus 12 divided by x times x plus 4, which is the same thing we, we had um, in red a moment ago. I can multiply x by this parenthesis if, if I want to, but I don't, I don't really have to do that. I hope that makes it clear. Another thing that some students are really, they don't like is when you have a compound fraction. A compound fraction is a fraction where on top, in the numerator itself you have a fraction, and in the denominator you also have a fraction. Okay? So that would be a compound fraction. Now, I'm, I'm going to do it again a little bit different from what the book does it. So either way uh, you want to do it, it would be fine. So let's look, you have, you have 3 divided by x minus 2 in the numerator of this fraction, and then 9x 
uh, 9 divided by x minus 4x. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tr treat each one of these separately. So this one separate from. So I'm going to this, do this long division line, which is that. Now 3 divided by x, 3 divided by x minus 2, I'm going to give it the denominator of 1, minus 2 divided by 1. So I'm going to subtract these two fractions. The common denominator between 1 and x is x. So x divided by x is 1. 1 multiplied by 3 is 3 minus x divided by 1 is x. x multiplied by 2 is 2x. That's what I would have in the numerator. In the denominator, I would do the same thing. I give a denominator of 1 here. Nothing changes. So now the common denominator between x and 1 is x. x divided by x would be 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Minus x divided by x is, I'm sorry, x divided by 1 is x. Uh, and x times 4x is 4x squared. Now, this denominator at the bottom and this denominator in the, in the numerator, they would cancel each other. Therefore, what I have is 3 minus 2x in the numerator, 9 minus 4x squared in the denominator. I'm not done because when I notice in the, in the bottom here, 9 minus 4x squared is the difference of 2 squares. In other words, I'm going to write this down as 3 squared minus 2x squared. So it's the difference of 2 squared. That can be written, let me write, rewrite this again. The numerator is 3 minus 2x. Keep that. Now this difference of 2 squares can be written as 3 minus 2x multiplied by 3 plus 2x. Now the 3 minus 2x in the denominator would cancel with 3 minus 2x in the numerator. Therefore, you end up with 1 over 3 plus 2x. That's the final answer. Okay. So that's the way, that's the way I would do it. Now, we're going to see and uh, how they did it on, on, the, on the slide themselves. They multiplied everything in the numerator by an x, everything in the, in the denominator by an x. So the value does not change since you're multiplying by the same thing. The value does not change. So when you do that, you end up canceling this x would cancel with this x. The minus 2 multiplied by x would remain. This x would cancel with this x. x times 4x would become 4x squared. That's what I have. Okay. And next thing is distribute the difference of two squares. And they did that. Now cancel this term and this term. You get 1 over 1 over 3 plus 2x. Sorry, I'm a little too fast. 1 divided by 3 plus 2x, which is the same thing we had moments ago. This is a compound fraction.